The Carbon War Room is a global nonprofit that really focuses on harnessing the power of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship by unlocking market-driven solutions to climate change. So we don't work directly on changing policy or changing uh, government subsidies or policy, but we really focus on business and finding where there are market failures in the marketplace and how we might remove those market failures to allow for uh, climate change solutions to grow more rapidly. How does it want to realize its objectives? Well, we have three groups within the war room. So we have research, network engagement, and operations. The research group is constantly trying to find areas where the technology really isn't the problem, right? That in fact, the technology has met its technical milestones, it's actually quite uh, mature for the banking community, and that the policies because of that are actually quite friendly and still capital is not flowing. And so we've had successes in shipping and energy efficiency in other places. But that, that they're looking across 25 different sectors to try to find areas where, where there are cost-effective solutions that can scale. The network engagement group then goes one step further and tries to find the 25 fearless change makers that are really trying to make a difference in that area globally. And so we can figure out what support we might be able to give them specifically to really supercharge their efforts. And then the operations group actually performs those actions, right? They actually go and supercharge those folks. Um, so it's fun. Can you give me an example of a practical solution? Yeah, so our biggest success has been in shipping. Um, in shipping, uh, for years and years, decades actually, there have been solutions with less than a two-year payback on fuel savings. But they haven't really been implemented. So today there's about $70 billion worth of fuel that's wasted per year that could be saved if less than three year payback solutions were implemented. And what we found was that in fact the reason they're not implemented is because the ship owners don't really pay for the bulk of the fuel expense. It's really the cargo owners that pay for the fuel expense. But the cargo owners don't have the information necessary to choose ships based on the efficiency of the ship. And so what we did was we actually found uh, data that was available on the efficiency of ships and published data for 95% of all of the uh, ships' um, cargo carrying capacity in the world um, by putting an Energy Star label, an A to G fridge sticker, if you will, on the side of all these ships in a website called shippingefficiency.org. And so because of our work, um, billions of dollars are now flowing into efficient ships to upgrade them. Um, because of that, uh, many small companies who have these technologies are now receiving venture capital and other support for their companies to grow, whereas before all of that money went into renewable energy, now it's going into shipping and other areas. And ports and others are feeling far more confident about their ability to regulate the ship owners um, because now they have the data. They know which ships are efficient and which are not efficient, so they can provide uh, subsidies to people that are efficient, for instance. What's your vision on the overall market development of clean energy and carbon finance? So I think if you talk to Bloomberg New Energy Finance and the World Economic Forum, they've done a paper showing that roughly $550 billion a year needs to be shifted from bad investments to good investments. Right Now that number might be wrong, maybe it's 650 or 750, but it's within that realm. Last year, those same uh, Bloomberg New Energy Finance said that roughly 200 to 250 billion went into good stuff. Right, And so we're approaching halfway to the goal, right? And most of that, I would say, is clean energy, like clean electricity. Um, and so I think on clean electricity, we're really hitting the mark quite well. Um, and I think the growth will continue at double-digit growths per year. Um, but where we're not doing so well is in some of these other technologies, shipping, aviation, renewable fuels, um, energy efficiency for buildings. And so largely what the war room is focused on right now is actually ramping up those other categories. Because if we really just ramp up clean electricity, then those other categories still remain. And so we're trying to figure out how you balance the two together. But we're quite bullish. I mean, basically, we're already at $240 billion. We believe that that number is going to grow um, over the next few years. And my sense is, is that that the data and the research that we've come up with shows that that number could easily be a trillion dollars per year. So for those people in the financial community who are looking desperately for a place to put their money that's low risk, that's not U.S. Treasuries that might have a very, very low return, um, I, I have good news. I mean, a lot of good stuff is coming.